Oxford. Hello, everyone. Thank you. He's just a writer. And what does he just write? Um, would you mind if I move, moved around? I just feel that she'd be moving on this. That's fine. <clears throat> He's just a writer. And what does he just write? I'd like to ask him to dinner. So he wants to meet me? Oh, Daddy, he's just a friend. Not all journalists are potential assassins. You know very well, Rachel, I never grant interviews. Henry says it would be bad for my health. Your book's nearly ready. David's finding his feet. This would be a worldwide coup for him. And if you're clever... You could get him to write exactly what you want. Well, I think you should. Check it out. I tell you, I'm putting on so much weight casting this play. Every agent in town's been whining and dining me. You look knackered. You should have the liver. Pump the iron. I never see very well in the lead-up to a play. I just eat and brood. Well, there were some strong candidates. Mm. Who was the one you liked? What's her name? Hilary Rule. Yes. She was good, I thought. Hmm? Touch young. Well, she's in the age range. She's very inexperienced. We could go for a real name if you wanted. Now, Liz, I thought the reason we're holding open auditions for this part was to find someone new. Let's look at her with the American. He's got a strong presence. He could easily overpower her. You look great today, I thought. Even better in the flesh than in that movie. She's coming! Turn that off! They don't broaden this musical horizon! He hates that stuff! Josie's had the baby. Josie? Mm. Oh, your sister. And how is she? Ghastly, as predicted. Postnatal manic depression. Mm. She's unloaded it onto mum and dad. Oh, you don't want to hear all this stuff. Now go away, you two, and get on with it. I have to go in again tomorrow. I think it's a good sign. Well, they may want to try right with the rock and range. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was incredible in that film, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. What's he doing over here, anyway? Oh, he's quite a coup. He, he was deluged with film offers, but he said, um, live theatre is what he wanted to do right now. <laughs> we weren't about to argue. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. You don't think that they suspect anything, do you? I mean, about us. I'm certain they don't. You know, uh, I was thinking, I, I could get you another flat. Right, so you want me to be like a kept woman? Like a mistress, is that what you want? I've never thought of you in that way. No, that. What do you expect me to say? I, I want us to be official. Out in the open, it's just that... It's so awkward here. The, the walls are so thin, they must hear everything. Well, you know the solution. You know when I went to the country last weekend, to, to the cottage? Yeah. Eleanor and I were standing on the edge of a cliff, and um, she suddenly turned to me and she said, um, now's your chance. Push me over. And the terrible thing was, the thought had already flashed across my mind. It's Daddy, finally. Michael. I'm keen now. Who's winning? United. 
fucking boring. All these messages, Felix. I had no idea when you'd be home. I did say be casting. Danny, money not You can never tell how long they're going to go on these sessions. They're quite exhausting, actually. Especially when they go this late. I remember the pussy, Dad. Give me ten minutes, sweetheart. I hate waiting round, not knowing when to start dinner. Well, you know, casting sessions is no time. I know how long casting sessions last. I've seen you through eleven plays. You didn't call because you were with her. This is your family, Felix. You're destroying it. Robin? Hillary. Hi. I saw you yesterday. You're great. Just forget we're here. Liz told you the scene, didn't she? Scene six, page 24? Yeah. yeah. I'm so nervous. Don't know. It's like having two big brothers take notes while you go to the job. Try sitting on the couch. Snuggle up. It's a moment of intimacy. He's a great man, remember? Hey, I'm a disciple, and he's a god as far as I'm concerned. But he has his human vanities. Kisses, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the worst possible thing. But don't try to impress him, either by being his equal. Your father's no mere mortal. But then again, neither's his daughter. Jean and Ian, remember they split up last Christmas? Jean plummeted in lust with a rock star. What's going on? Some kind of mass neurosis? Male menopause. Women are the bolters more often than not. Do you know what I was thinking coming over here tonight? You two are almost the only constant in my life. Hello? So are you for us, Humphrey? I don't count. Miserable old bachelor. Ms. Wright still eludes me. Oh, thank you. Hello? I know I shouldn't ring you at home. I just had to tell you I got the part. I got it. <laughs> oh, good. Well, thanks for letting me know. Right. Goodbye. You didn't even try to save it! Because I'm so bored being goalie. Stupid woman. What time will you be home tonight? I try not to be too late, but it's difficult. You can't even make time to discuss breaking up your family. You can't even make time for that! Ah! Ah! Well, I suppose you're all wondering why I summoned you here today. <laughs> I knew when I read it, we had a superlative play. I now know we have a cast to match. And we a director. Here, here. Well, thank you. I concur with the endearing lack of false modesty that is my trademark. Now, the hitman. It's a complex, demanding play. A moral fable for our morally ambiguous times. The house of a great Jewish scholar. Assassin at the gate. The wife, long disabled by a bomb meant for her husband. The daughter, greatly loved and greatly loving her adoptive parents. You were the counterpoint to the other lovers. 
the young, the, how shall I put it, ageless. <laughs> Thank you. Will David betray his mission and risk dishonor over that uniquely human thing called love? Yeah, well, what is honor when it comes down to it? It's just another relative human value. Honor's irrelevant, isn't it? Basically, he's a killer. A killer with a conscience. I mean, it's his moral duty to kill you. Morality's got nothing to do with that. Look, if you've seen your country occupied, thousands murdered while the rest of them are herded into camps and ghettos, I think you might consider it your moral duty. You're not defending terrorism, surely? No. A good or bad or relative is all I'm saying. Take your character, um, Theo. From my vantage point, he deserves to have his head blown the off. <laughs> My children were killed or maimed, I'd be capable of anything. Dear old Todd doesn't agree. He's still sulking. I better go cheer him up. Speaking of which, what's up with Felix? He looks like shit. It might be a minor matter of an extramarital nature. I wouldn't know. I thought he was Mr. Family Man. Homo erectus desperatus. The eternal itch happens to us all sooner or later. Todd. You know, I think that Theo is truly the best character in a modern play I've ever read, even if he does deserve to be shot. It's a good part. It's a great part. It basically carries the whole play. It's truly great casting. Thank you. Hey, Hill. Hi. What can I get you? Uh, I have a gin and tonic. Uh, Julian, a large gin and tonic for the lady. He still looks miserable. Mm. Any chance to get my part in large, I gotta take. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Hey, Felix. How you doing? Oh, fine, fine. Just want you to know that I would have killed for this role. <laughs> I'm glad that was unnecessary. It's true, though. I mean, those scenes with me and Rachel. She's great, Hillary, isn't she? Mm. I mean, she's a real find. You know, I mean, the, the, the tension and the, the suspense at the end, have I really fallen for her or not? And I get to grab that gun, it's like, bang, bang, bang! You know, I mean, <laughs> man, that's some climax. British audiences are suspicious of happy endings. Americans are just the opposite. We don't trust happiness. Why? You think it's going to be taken away or something? Or have too high a price. She's always had a wild temper, but now she's going completely crazy. If I leave, I'm afraid she really might damage herself as a kind of revenge. That's terrible. It's just impossible. Oh, sorry. Will you be long? I've got an interview. Just a couple of minutes. Careful. Samson lost his power when Delilah cut his hair. Mm -hmm. I was seeing you on Saturday, Felix. Saturday? It's her birthday. Oh, God. I I'm sorry, Serena. It's just impossible. Oh, there's the Playwrights Conference. We can get away for that. Mm. It's just two nights and it's not till the end of the month. I just can't stand much more of this. I know. I know. I'm 
will change things. Somehow I'll do it. Yes? Mm. Mm. How do we look? A little bit younger. <laughs> a little bit. I should have chopped that down though, shouldn't I? Eleanor. Come on in. I promised not to stay. Just a few words with a great man. Ah, oh, he's not here. I, I thought he was with you. Well, that was the idea. He had a few things to work out with Robin Grange. I thought he'd be back by now. Never mind. It'll keep... Oh, no, stay. Oh, let's have a drink. He'll be back soon. I'd love to. It appeals to you, doesn't it? What? Playing an assassin. Yeah, I could be a killer. It's a living. Yeah. Actually, seduction's more my line. Excuse me, um, you're Robin Grange, aren't you? <laughs> Last time I looked. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's just uh, I loved your last movie. Especially the bit when you wrote your phone number on her leg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just my friend bet me that I wouldn't dare ask. I'll tell your friend she just lost a bet. <laughs> Now, promise me you'll never watch this song. No chance. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> what did you write? My phone number. <laughs> oh, Christ. What's the matter? I'll be a minute, all right? <laughs> Hillary? <laughs> You're not alone, are you? Felix, don't worry, I'm not in any danger. Is Serena with you? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Love you. Songs of your youth, Todd. Never out of date. Woo! <laughs> Do I detect a boyfriend by any chance? Afraid so, Todd. He's just checking to see I'm not getting up to any mischief. And are you? <laughs> not tonight, Todd. <laughs> He knows where I live. I'll never be safe now. I'm sorry, Eleanor. I've been discussing things. Getting on well with Robin, are you? Yes, yes. Actually, he's got some good ideas. I won't keep you long. But I, uh, I had a meeting with Michael after the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that audiences for Immaculate Deception are not picking up. He's wondering if we can't advance the opening date. Oh, Jesus. We're under enough pressure as it is. Look. I've got a strategy, and I think it could work. It's going to involve a hell of a lot more than What have you found out? Very little. A man rented the apartment for him several weeks before he arrived. A man? A student type, she thought. She's never seen him again? Yeah. I've added a new scene between you and Hillary, uh, oh. Rachel, which changes the dialogue in the following scene as well. Uh, Great. Uh, you, uh, you've traced... You've, you've never traced the account? You've traced, you've traced the account. It's David's. All about I like this guy. <laughs> you really get off on him, don't you? I told you I was a mercenary at heart. I'd do anything for money. Anything legal? Not necessarily. How is it paid? You all right? Yeah. I'm just tired, that's all. It's a nerve-wracking time. Yes, but there's no tension in you at all. There's no guilt. It's sad. Oh, I, well, it's because I don't know my lines yet. I'm sorry. Felix. Cheers. It's your marriage, isn't it? You know the theater, it's a goldfish bowl. You know, you have been looking pretty beat up lately. You live near. What are people saying? Word is you want to leave your wife for another woman, and now all hell's breaking loose. They say your wife... My wife is blameless. No, I'm sure she no, is. Yeah. Uh, it's a classic banal plot, you know. <laughs> 
two people who could be happy together, but only at the expense of the third. I said I was a mercenary at heart. What? I said I was a mercenary. Does that mean? I could seduce your wife. Are you crazy? I'm dead serious. Oh, for Christ's sake. Give you some space. I'm not in the mood for playing games. I'll see you tomorrow. Felix. Think about it. All right. Oh, hi. Are you waiting for Hillary? Uh, I think she and Serena went off to a club. Oh, I see. You want to come in? No, no, I, I won't, thanks. All right. I'm surprised you bothered to come home. I haven't seen her tonight. I promise you. Is she great in bed? Eleanor, the company's in trouble financially. You've heard of Humphrey. I was great too once. At least you made me feel that way. But it's hard to remember, isn't it? When you won't even touch me anymore. I feel like a piece of fun. So, Felix, what am I supposed to do to feel like a woman again? Shall I get a lover, hmm? Why won't you talk to me? Because whenever I try, you get upset. Upset? I'm fucking mad. Now, listen, we're both tired. You, we've been drinking. This isn't the best time. When is the best time? When I'm asleep? I can't hear you say you're going to walk out on us, leaving me to cope with three heartbroken children. Is that the best time? Is it? Is it? Listen, you, you'll wake the children. Fine! Let them see what you're really like. I've done everything for you. Moved your own country. Made a home for you so you could write. Helena! <laughs> It'll be the security people. Can you get it, darling? Anna! Up in it! Anna! What's happening? It's fine. It's fine. She's upset. That's all. It's fine. I'm her husband. It's all right. It's all under control. Are you sure you're all right? <laughs> Mummy's all right. She's just tired. That's all. Mary, take Jesse back to bed. Danny, go to bed. Women are definitely unstable. Sex. <laughs> we all have our ups and downs. Where will you be staying? At the conference. Mm. In a hotel. Five star luxury befitting England's, England's greatest, greatest living, living playwright. playwright. Can I call you there? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if the house burns down or something, I might need to get hold of you. So I'm the only man. I have to deal with three hysterical females. You can always call me. Anytime. I suppose it would be pretty boring for Mum. I wish she was doing that. Why is that? Oh, well. Then you can have some time together. The two of you. Do you feel like a drink? You're taking her, aren't you? Hillary? 
Good night, darling. Uh, listen. You're going to be very disappointed, and, uh, and I am sorry. I don't think I'm going to be able to take you after all to the conference. Oh. You see, Danny asked me, and um, I had to tell him I was going alone. I had to promise. I, I I can't lie to him. If I start lying to the kids, I'm... Do you see? Yes, I see. I can't tell you how terrible it is here. I, I, I'm trapped in a nightmare. We can't go on like this, Felix. I'm not going to see you again. Privately, I mean, until you've made a decision. You don't mean that. It's not fair to her either. Look, I, I'll call you from there, all right? Don't call me or contact me unless it's to tell me you're moving out. <laughs> you gave him the elbow. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, look, tough is the only way to play. <laughs> Big drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robin? Yeah? Can we have a chat at lunchtime? Sure. You still love her. Of course, after 14 years. The last thing I'd want is for her to be hurt. She wouldn't be. Anyway, it's an impossible idea. I've been thinking about it all night. There's no way she'd ever have a casual relationship or a one-night stand. You don't know Eleanor. She's... This wouldn't be a casual relationship. What would it be? A proper love affair. I mean, if she get bored of me after a while, that's easily arranged, but at least she'd get her confidence back. It all sounds so cold-blooded. I look at it as a compassionate way out. She's going to get to see that leaving you isn't the end of the world. What would be in it for you? There's going to be expenses along the way, but... You know, basically, I just see this as doing a favor for a friend. You know, I've seen her picture. She's a beautiful woman. This isn't going to exactly be a chore, you know. The whole thing's absurd. You know, maybe someday you'll be able to repay the favor. Definitely out. Dentist. I double checked. Come on. I said I'm his cat. Show me the bedroom first. I want to see your clothes. This way. She still thinks we have an ideal marriage. I suppose I did too, in a way. So, yeah, I tell you, Miss Hillary. I'm sorry. You know, it's just hard to keep things from actors. They're just gossipy old tarts as how it says. Mm. Her clothes are in this cupboard. Yeah. Mm.
This must be hidden from Eleanor, always. Do you understand? Yeah, I know. And Hillary must never be told. If she ever found out, that would be it. All right. She's a bit conservative. She's old fashioned, even. Listen, I'm gonna have to know all her interests. I wanna know her taste in music and art. I wanna know what restaurant she eats at. Where does she shop? Is her side of the bed? Yes. Well, she likes classical music. Um, Debussy, Dvorak. Uh, this is one of her favorites. You put it on. practical uh, with the family. And is this one of yours? No, it's one of Ellen's. She's a writer, too. Well, she never finished anything. I'm going to have to read that later. Oh, for God's sake! The worst thing is... She's done nothing wrong. Nothing to deserve all this. She's been the perfect classic wife. In fact, in fact, I feel exactly the same about her as I did on our wedding day. You jerk away from the table, Audrey's drink spills. Todd, Rachel, jump up. Off they go and fetch her pills. Audrey says. Can I talk no. to you after the rehearsal? Yeah. Then she spins her chair around. Yeah, it's about the party tonight. I'm getting clumsy in my own way. I have to take Ellen. Who's got a clumsy in the suit? So, um, both of you in the same room, I just. I just what are you saying? Let her breathe. I couldn't handle it. I'm sorry. Mop up her dress. There can be a hint of tenderness. Uh, why the one off her bosom? I don't think the bosom, the lap. Hmm? But I haven't had sex for 15 years. I'm screaming for it. You're a man of principle. Todd assures us that he's working diligently on his characterization. No. <laughs> I was thinking about going to Cuba. All theatre people, I'm afraid, very incestuous. Don't let them bore you. But do encourage them to gossip about me and report back. Now, Delvin, you know? Elena. And Liz, our casting consultant. Hi. I'll get you a drink. That's a gorgeous necklace. Thank you. From your husband. Am I right? Or am I right? You're right. An endangered species, husbands. It's been so long since I had one, the word alone sets me off. I come over all mushy and maudlin. You forget about the bad bits, don't you? I don't. I have nightmares about the bad bits. It's the little things I miss. My last one was very good at giving small and costly gifts. He'd get the mail order and put them on my credit card. Surrender without a struggle to resist 
child. I am not resisting. Oh, do you hear that? I have the author's <laughs> wife in my power to do with her what I will. Shall I hold her to ransom? You can introduce her to me, you barbarian. Uh, yes, this is uh, the lovely Eleanor, wife of Felix, mysterious and unknowable. This is the lovely and mysterious <laughs> Robin Grange, Eleanor, who plays David. So how does Felix conceive all these plots? Do you both talk for hours in bed? Oh, no, no, it's no, not like that. No, of course not. That is not what they do at bedtime in the best regulated families. <laughs> Felix is an observer. He's watching you right now, Todd, and axing your lines as we speak. Todd, Robin, come and meet our producer. The Almighty awaits. <laughs> you have to excuse my friend. It's nice meeting you. Nice to have met you. Even if he didn't take his weight on his elbows. I wouldn't worry if he left his socks on. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I heard you got sick last night. Yeah. How was the party? Oh, it was good. Nice to see Felix relax for a change. I met his wife. Man, what are they going for? All right. Anyway, I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks. And Henry says, Father was played by Van Gogh. Somebody I know. You know. Apart from the theater crowd, I don't know a soul in this town. Did you enjoy it? Very much. Yeah, me too. I came right from rehearsal. So are you alone? Yes. Can I take you out for a cup of coffee? Uh, yes, thank you. Great. I can't believe that one. Music's my way of winding down. Though I know I'm a tough audience after work because the lines, they just whirl around in your head. Humphrey seems pleased. Yeah, that's good. Just don't tell anyone, but with this play and that director, I don't think we can lose. So are you in the theater? No. Never? Well, I did a bit of playwriting once. And then you blew it marrying a playwright. <laughs> you haven't given up on it, though, have you? Oh, I still do bits and pieces for myself. Well, good. Next time you write something, just don't give it to Felix. Bring it to me instead. I haven't seen you around rehearsal lately. Mm. I don't think Felix likes me to, you know. Well, he hasn't been there that much either. You should come sometime, though. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a madhouse, but it's a lot of fun. It'd be nice to see a different face. Nice for me. Sure you don't want some coffee? I'll make some breakfast. Thanks. Uh, I'm leaving town for three days, and uh, I thought it would be a good chance for you to see Eleanor. When? Next weekend. Playwrights conference. Ben! You two kind of met the other night at the pub. Hi. Hello. Robin's told me all about you. Looking forward to seeing your play. All right. Annabelle has been doing some uh, secretarial work for me lately. Mm. Uh-huh. You shouldn't be leaving things like this lying around your desk. And you shouldn't be pointing at me either. They could be loaded. No, you are dangerous. Is that thing real? Why, you want to borrow it? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing with one of these? Makes me feel butch. Now listen, I'm gonna have to see Eleanor again before you leave. Don't 
<laughs> Hi. Hello. Miss Rehearsal. Oh, I didn't come for that. Not this time. I'm waiting for Felix. Oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. Where are you heading? Then you'll stop by to play. All right, it's the big first night. Well, and I'm sorry, uh, snacks come up in act two. Um, it's urgent, I have to work it out with Humphrey. I, I won't be able to make it tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, is it too late? Can you call someone else? Well, it starts in half an hour. I'll go. I mean, I am done here for the night. Unless, of course, you have someone else. Oh, I haven't. It's just, I, I've never seen a Stoppard play before, and I always wanted to. I got a jacket just over there, we could still make it in time. Thanks. Sure. Right. Don't you mind? I'm sorry. I'll see you later. We can always fix this tomorrow. I hate first nights anyway. Is Eleanor going alone? Robin's going with her. <laughs> to have an evening with a handsome actor. I think I better warn you then. Why? I think I know why our friend left Hollywood. Why? Well, uh, the word is the head of the studio doing front line caught him in bed with his wife. Apparently, Nitty went berserk. Robin decided it'd be a good idea to leave town for a while. I'm guessing everybody drinks this, but I refuse to go back there if I'm wrong. Thank you, Robin. Robin is one of the leads in Felix's new play. What sort of role are you playing? Well, basically, I'm a hitman in a play about politics and morality, but. I think it's going to end up being about love. <laughs> Drink to that. Right. Right. You mix a mean espresso. Now I bet you Felix is waiting for you. I'd better get back for the babysitter. Well, thank you for a great night. You know how to get out of here? All right, we'll lock your door. A beautiful woman like you out on her own. Oh, don't worry. This is dear old England, you know. You could never be too careful, Eleanor. Hey, Elena, it's, it's Robin Grange. Listen, I'm sorry about all this noise. There's a uh, Finzi concert tomorrow in the Modern Series. I thought you might like. Oh, yes, I would. No, I can't go to the damn We're rehearsing. I just wanted to make sure you knew. Thanks for the thought. Bye. Let's do a quick run through of your new lines at the front of this scene. You lot can break for lunch. Might have I go over some scenes with Hillary? Oh, away with you, young things. Um, if Theo reminds Audrey that uh, Moshe is in the garden waiting, I think it makes the transition easier if you refer to him. Anyway, I, I don't need to hear it now. You seem so cold, it's like I don't even know you. Well, maybe you don't. Maybe there's nothing to know. <laughs> you lead a charmed life. Why? Well, how many beautiful young actresses you know have an Oxford degree in their resume? It didn't just fall into my lap, you know. And then out of drama school into the hottest theater company in town? Sounds pretty charming to me. We are obviously fated. Fated to do what? Well, after dinner, we go back to have a script conference at my apartment. Mm -hmm. Still in flowers, we get some really cheap wine and make mad, passionate blow with some dirty videos. You should be so lucky. All right, no videos. We'll go back to my Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, isn't this out of your territory? Yeah, but it's the best bread in town, and I'm planning a private picnic, being it's the first nice day around here in months. Mm -hmm. What are you up to? Oh, shopping. Mainly for the children. Felix is away. That's right, he's at that conference. So, how come we're not rehearsing? Because my co-star, Hillary Rule, has gone away for a couple days, and nobody seems to know where. 
Listen, uh, I'm tired of eating alone. And your kids are still in school, right? What do you say? Why not? Here's to the first decent day in months. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for you everywhere. I've been right here waiting for you. So you ready? Ready for what? <laughs> Remember what we decided this morning. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> ready for what? For me to drive you home, slowly. I can't let you in. <laughs> Why, do your friends have to be vetted or something? Enough already. Come on, Doreen. This is good. How's the conference? Hello. How was the Hell, evening? that's too bad. I had a great weekend. Good. You're avoiding the press. Here's a copy of all my expenses. Itemized for your tax return. So you going to the drama awards? Yes, I'm presenting one. You're not getting cold feet, are you? No. I mean, you could still pull out. It's not quite too late. You were spying on me. Henry always takes down the car numbers of the cars waiting outside the Well, you needn't worry. My virtue is still intact. Very good. Damn. Pace is just right. Gentlemen, Humphrey Beale, Felix Webb, the old team back in action, and for the LTC. Tell me something about this new project. Ah, well, you see, sorry. Humphrey has this quaint concept of theatre as entertainment. It's quite revolutionary. I've been looking for you. Hello. Hi. Let's get out of here. A song of intellectual respectability beloved of the Olivier Committee. But this is a very controversial subject. What kind of audience reaction are you expecting? Well, awestruck, I hope. <laughs> We're free. <laughs> We've escaped. <laughs> I hate these things. Yes. I mean, everybody's always looking over your shoulder to see if there's someone more important they should uh, be talking to, right? Of course, dear, of oh. course. <laughs> and Felix gets invited to so many of them these days. Well, at least you get your time together at home. Uh, not really, no. No, he's, um... He's a workaholic. Hmm. He goes from one play to the next. He's doing a screenplay for Paramount after this. What's it called? Sound and Fury. Hey, I tell you something. You know the only reason I came here today was to see you. You're going to have to ask us to leave, right? Luncheon is served, sir. Hey. You mind what I said? No, but um, Felix will be waiting for me. I'd, I'd better go back on my own. used to drinking in the afternoon. It's awful, isn't it? I rather enjoyed it. dinner with me tomorrow? Uh, well, I'm not sure when I, you know, um... Tell you what, I'll call you back at a better time. All right, thank you. Bye. Yeah, hi, it's Hillary there. 
It's Robin Grant. That was Jean Deacon. Oh. You know Jean? Mm -hmm. She wanted me to go out with her tomorrow evening. Her husband is away. He's on business. She have said yes. Oh, well, I didn't know if I... You know. Well, maybe I will. That was great. I think we covered everything, haven't we? Not quite everything. I'm afraid that's not allowed. We're two of a kind. Actually, we're completely different. We're complementary. Opposite. Opposites attract. They also repel. Leave it. No, leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Henry? Oh, it's you. Nothing. Where are you sleep? We're not talking, remember? Please stop it. What's wrong? It's just Serena. She's been in pain. Look, um, I can't bear not being able to see you. We've been through all this. You sound as if you don't care. Of course I do. Look, I'm definitely moving out. When? As soon as the play opens. Let me think about it and I'll tell you tomorrow. I guess I wasn't your agent. You've just had a very narrow escape. I was about to kick you in the... Funny how your stuff's grown in the play. You got Morton Delvine now. Ah, Felix in that script. He just can't let go. It's a lot like his marriage, you know. Needs that security blanket. You know Eleanor? No. I do. Do you? Yeah, take her out a bit. What's she like? Ah, everyone loves her. I mean, she's a little crazy right now, but you know these long-term relationships, how they got their ups and downs, and. They're in a down right now, but I'm sure they'll pull through. <laughs> hey. Hey. Look at me. Sorry. I guess I came this way on purpose, but I just wanted you to see my place. I'd like to. Say hi to the sleepy Albert. Oh, how do you do, Albert? Oh, you're lovely. Mm. Oh, what'll happen to you when your master goes back to America? Mm. I'm not going back. Why don't I fix us some drinks? You want to pick a record? All right. Okay. Wait for me, Albert.
music. Well, we're two of a kind, you and I. We find the same things important. We're both exiles. Exiles? Mm. So how'd you and Felix meet? In Rome. At a writer's conference. He'd just had his first play produced. Well, you're a whole lot prettier than him. A whole lot nicer than me. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's about time we got on the subject of you. You know, it's not easy the way you always try to avoid it. Ellie. Ellen, I, I know about Felix and Hillary Rule. I gotta work with her every day. You know, they're not the most discreet of lovers. It's like this open secret. You see, now that I've got to know you, it's just so unbelievable. Did you know it's common knowledge about you and Hillary Rule? It must be hard for her, everyone knowing why she was cast. Yes? Hello? Hi, Elena. Yes. Time. Yes. One o'clock? Yes. Good. Bye. Hello, Robin. These things are so real. It's the exact same weight as mine. I tried calling you on Tuesday night. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. I must not have my machine on. Where were you? Somewhere's good, I hope. Punk. You got a visitor. You want to get that part she went for? No. Oh, that's a drag. How much she wanted it. I'll be sure to tell her I said hang in there, okay? You didn't tell me he'd been around. Didn't I? No. We had a read through. Uh huh. Tuesday night, was it? I bet he tried it on the bastard. Did he? Oh, Felix. Actually, 
Actually, he told me he knows Eleanor. What did he say? He takes her out of it. He likes her a lot. Is anybody here? The doors are locked. Everybody's gone. Just the two of us. Robin? <laughs> you're not an actor. You're a magician. That's what actors are. We're weavers of spells. <laughs> it's scary being on stage. No. I want you to help me rehearse my toughest scene. So what was she doing there? She was meeting someone. Robin, it must have been. I guess. Honey, please. In a way. You want to help? There is something going on with him. <laughs> what did happen when you came here? What do you mean? You just worked, went through the script to gauges. He moved in on you, didn't he? Felix, you don't trust each other. It's him I don't trust. Well, don't unload it on me because I can't deal with this right now. I'm desperate to interview your father. But there's something else I want more. What's that? You. You see. I wasn't raised on love. Love was never mentioned. It didn't exist. But then when it hit me, it was like I was a stranger in my own head. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. to go. When are they coming back? We still have ten minutes. Oh. You know I hate the thought of you being married, Ellie. I'm not even a jealous guy. Well, you needn't be. <laughs> you still love Felix. What happened? I need to see you every day. You know? I, mean, I don't mind if you still care for Felix. It's a lie. <laughs> I care a hell of a lot. All right? I'm gonna give you fair warning. I want you for me. It's just gonna have to be your choice, okay? 
I'm willing to wait. Where are you going tonight? To see a play? The essay is great. Thanks. What play is it? An Oscar Wilde. You look really good. Thank you. So, how are you going, Miss Kasparov? Move the light. You're so annoying. You lose the rook. Well, I'm off now. How long has the castle been in? Almost an hour. Mm, half an hour more should do. What time will you be back? You'll be asleep. I'll come and kiss you goodnight. Now, fai la brava, non stuzzicare Dani. Yes, ma'am. Ciao, Dani. Ciao. Why aren't you going, Daddy? I have to work. Bye. Bye. Who's she going with? Just a friend. A man or a woman? You're so naive sometimes, Jessie. No, I'm not. It's naive. Now listen, you three. It's a long time since your mother's had much opportunity to go out. Now you're older, she can. Poor Daddy. Is it awful for you? No. <laughs> it's good for people to have some space. I'm not naive, am I? No, darling. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. What's the matter? Ah, uh, I'll be all right. Shall we go? It starts soon. We got a minute. Come here, Mr. Shears. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can I present to you the author of the play we're about to read? This is Eleanor Webb. Hey! It's very important that a writer see her work performed. some explaining to do, too. I think I guessed. Something extraordinary has happened, Felix. It's something two months ago that I thought was impossible. And you know him. <laughs> That's strange, too. It's Robin Grange, the actor. Did you guess? Uh, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? That the same thing should happen to me. I mean, it's... And are you really happy? I can understand now you and Hillary. I never thought I would. You haven't known him long. Felix. I didn't do this on the rebound. Or to make you jealous. It just happened. You can leave, Felix. You can start a new home with Hillary. Robin's talking about getting married. What? 
Don't worry. It's still too early to know if it's going to last, I know that. But he can come here sometimes when the children have got to know him. Felix. He'll never be a substitute father. No one's managed an assassination attempt in over 10 years. Uh, Humphrey, excuse me, Robin. Do you think I mind if I did this last bit sitting down? I think it'll be less melodramatic. You could try it. You don't want the stage littered with bodies. Yeah. I'll take a little bit further back. Uh, <clears throat> um, there's a gun pointing uh, at your head. If you shoot me, you will be killed. I see no point in that. Bang! Bang! Uh! you change the ending and have David killed? Because I think he should get his just desserts. People like him always get away with things. You don't like him, do you? No, not much. Although I know he's a great friend of yours. He's good to work with. Oh. Anyway, you cast him. I never thought of you as a method actress. You seem to need some sort of off-stage relationship with him, too. You know what I think? What? You resent him being with Eleanor. Oh, he's so transparent! I don't know why you encourage him. I'll stop speaking to him if that's what you want! Is it? I don't know what I want! Mm, dogs are taken for walks. Perhaps that's what I have become. A dog. Lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Predacious intent at square short leg. England, 58 for one now. The middle of the afternoon session and a long, long way from that West Indian total of 492. Avoiding me, I'm having withdrawal symptoms. Please. You are too admitted. No. Get out of here. We're on in a minute. Just came by to wish you luck. I'm gonna need it. I have never been so nervous in all my life. You're gonna be great. How are you feeling? Actually, I'm feeling pretty weird. What's wrong? I think I'm in love. Rubbish. Elvis wouldn't lie, baby. <laughs> Remember, we're two of a kind. Opposites. Opposites attract. They also repel. It's not even you, silly. It's Eleanor Webb. Are you serious? I've never been more serious in my whole life. Robin. <gasps> That's wonderful. Really. I am just visiting with my co-star, and I'm out of here. Felix, what are you doing? <sighs> I'll see you later. Good luck for tonight. Ha! 
Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
was all that about wanker. The whole thing's been a big strain for you now. Well, I'm really. He lost it for a few minutes. Ever seen him so It's good, Felix. It's your best. Are you all right? He's an actor. He'll have to go away. Well, then I'll have to find another lover. Excellent. Felix, it was brilliant. Mm. You better go in there. She's a bit overwhelmed. Um, excuse me. members socks and more sky high it's just all worked out perfectly isn't it what so conveniently for us don't you think i think it's about time you two were formally introduced hillary rule eleanor webb you were very good thank you there's something strange happened tonight some schmuck got in my dressing room but the only thing he stole was my gun you know the one from my last movie that Marty gave me as a souvenir? I mean, it's a dummy gun. It's got dummy bullets, but, uh, still. You better tell security. Mm. Anyway, I'd like to make a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? I need to make a toast. To a man who I think I could safely now call one of my closest friends. To the man who's mainly responsible for this evening's success, to Felix Webb. Yes. 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 Donna, something else I'd like to say on a personal note. There's something I feel that I, I need to share. You see, Felix has been commissioned by Paramount to write a new movie, and tonight he promised me the lead. I want to tell you something, Felix, in front of this handful of witnesses. You try to renege on this promise, there's going to be some hell to pay. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough for the hype. Now for the really big story. Ellen has been writing a play of her own for the last few years. And Robin gave it to the director of the royal court. And it's been accepted. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Who's the director? We'll talk about it. <laughs> and there's a role in it for me, too, if that's OK with the author. You don't mean the son? Huh. Oh, Robin, you always think you can play everyone. You're completely wrong for him. I mean, he needs to be really powerfully built, you know, rough. And, and I know the actor I want. Sorry. <laughs> Tom. 
come forward for a night in Wyoming. Hurry up, Jess, you're missing it. Get your arts into gear. I'm coming, I'm coming. Peter Williams for the legend of Johnny Walk. Robin Grange for Sound and Fury. Woo! There's money. And John Francis for Painting with Light. And the winner is... Robin Grange for Sound and Fury. Felix. Yes? He won. Right. Congratulations. Thanks. Love 